Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity podcast. So we've got a great show today. This is a very interesting session that I gave to a mom and her daughter. And she's inquiring because her daughter went to the eye doctor and she's wearing a very strong farsighted prescription. So the higher the number, the stronger the lens. And so she's wearing like a plus 7.25. That's a lot of magnification. So as you'll be able to tell from the session, I ask a lot of questions, especially early on. You know, I think the three most important times in a young child's life is the prenatal period we call gestation, the birth, and then the first three years of life where there's exploration and motor development, and so on. And there's an aspect of the child's development that really explains why she's got this really strong prescription. And so for any parent out there, and you go for an eye exam, you know, take your child for an eye exam, and you end up getting really strong glasses, that is such a symptom approach It doesn't get to the root cause. And basically, it's just reinforcing the pattern that's happening. And when I start looking at vision as a developmental process, and it's influenced by our motor development, our emotional development, our nutrition, our traumas, things like that, we start working in a way where we're treating the whole child and not just the eyeballs. And so you'll get to see some very interesting things in the way I analyze, diagnose, and then a series of physical therapy exercises that I think are gonna really contribute to the family. And so I was really grateful that they, they gave permission that we could show this video. So I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, leave your comments. And thanks for tuning in. Guys. Oh, got it. Okay. Not too bad yourself. Very well, thanks. You get a lot of, <laughs> a lot of snow up there? Not really. It's like no. in the 30s and there's no snow. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I know. I want some snow. <laughs> we need some. We need some. All right. Well, um, Give me a little background on what you want to work on and we'll we'll get to it. Uh, we're just trying to see if there's any way to improve um, her nearsightedness. Um, yep. About a year and a half ago when she started preschool, she it was a little bit be pre, before preschool when she first okay. got the glasses. Um, yes. We had her checked out maybe okay. like two months ago. And okay. it got like a little bit of a little bit worse, but it wasn't that much of a difference. So okay. I, I've seen some of your videos. So, and I know that there's certain things that you can like help to improve it. Sure. So, yeah. so do you, uh, did you send me the numbers, the RX or do you know what they are? They are? Um, I sent her, her current prescription. It was through a document. I put in um, her profile. Okay, let me look here. Um, uh, Hold on a minute. There we go. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so, wow. That's a a lot of farsightedness there. Plus 7725? Yeah. Plus plus seven, yeah. So that's a lot of farsightedness. 
my goodness. Has there been any eye turn or anything for Addison? No. So what precipitated this first appointment, say preschool, was she having any symptoms at all? Was she squinting or? Um, we were just notified by her uh, teachers and then just for like the yearly exam by the school officials to get her eyes checked out. And they said that she needed to be up close to certain things to see certain, some things. And like after realizing that, we did notice that she would stand really close to the TV when, uh -huh. when she was watching TV. Right. That, that's that's a really high prescription. I mean, that's that's out of bounds to me. That's really high for a child. Um, you know, these, these prescriptions sometimes are calculated uh, were there ever eye drops given first and then the prescription was? No, it was just always the eyeglasses. Okay. Uh, give me a little history on Addison's, what, what the, uh, what your birth, the birth experience was like, uh, gestation, like, um, um, Gestation and birth, any stresses going on, any difficult birth experiences? Um, for her personally, no. Um, I know the piece, of placenta, um, the piece of placenta got stuck in me, so I was rushed to the OR. Um, that was for me, though. Um, okay. After she was delivered, they did notice a hip click. Okay. Um, so she was in a harness for about three to six months. Um, and then after that, she was out of there. Everything's been good. Um, she also got lip tie surgery done. A lip tie, you say? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so developmentally, um, any challenges with reading or handwriting or? Um, she anything? does have. She is in um, like kind of like speech for IEP. Um, she has certain like letters she gets mixed up with and like certain mm -hmm. phases or stuff like that sound the same. All right. And um, so what grade is Addison in right now, presently? She's in kindergarten. 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 All right. <laughs> and so is that an all day thing? Is it a half day? Uh, it's from, yeah, from like eight to four. Eight to four. Okay. And so um, what was her experience with creeping and crawling? Was that all pretty normal? Did she jump away from crawling, not spend enough time? Or what was, what was the motor development? Um. I mean, since she had the harness, um, there was a little delay in the crawling, but once she had the harness off, she was pretty good, um, like timeline wise. Mm -hmm. And so the purpose of the harness was to do what? Um, to position the hip back into place. Cause I guess like when the, the socket for the hip, it was like not all the way fully in yet. That's what they said. So they had to like hold it up in place to like keep it there for a while to put it back in place. I see. So she basically had no real movement. She was just kind of laying around. Is that? Um, I mean, it was, she was able to move. It was just, they heard like a click uh -huh. and like, there was just, yeah, I don't know the whole reasoning behind it, but yeah, she was in uh -huh. it for about three to six months. Okay. And, um, so have you this this is probably if this is a, you know you haven't that's okay but have you uh explored any kind of alternative therapies whether it's ot or craniosacral or anything like that for her eyes or hips or for which one anything sensory motor um, uh, after um, get her out of the harness, she does see a chiropractor regularly. Okay, and what does the chiropractor do? Uh, just does adjustments um, to her, make sure that her hips are still aligned correctly, and uh -huh. yeah. 
Okay. Is it like a hard adjustment? Is it a soft adjustment? What is it's a soft adjustment? Uh -huh. And how often does she go? Once a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are these glasses worn full time or does she pretty, take them off? Pretty much other than like when she's um, sleeping or swimming or something, something like that. Okay. So she doesn't go without them. And yeah. do you, what do you notice behaviorally when she wears them versus when she doesn't wear them? Is there a big difference in her behavior or her energy when she doesn't wear them? Um, behavior wise, no. Um, I mean, she does complain, like when she does take them off, um, she sees double vision, um, and it's a little hard for her to see. Double vision. Okay. So when did that start happening? Um, maybe a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Okay. And, um, can I, uh, can I look at her eyes? Can I, can you just have her just look, just look without her glasses on? Go ahead and take her out. You, you have got a beautiful face. Okay, great. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks to me like some of the time her left eye might be turning in a little bit. Has that ever okay. been? Has that ever been? Um, has the eye doctor ever picked up on that? No. No, not picked up on that. Okay. And is the double vision all the time? Is it just some of the time when? I, it's, she's only said that when she has her glasses off. When she has her glasses <laughs> off, she goes into double. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, all right. Um, I Can we do this? Is there a book around or something up close? Can you have her hold a book? and have her take the glasses off and show me where she's got to hold the book where she sees the print clearly. Okay. Yeah. All right, you want to take the left? Okay. All right. So All right. have her hold the book and let's see where. All right. So hold the book as, like, as close to where you can see it. Okay. Can so you, right. Can you see the print on there? Fine. So you see the see the distance that she's holding the book? Yeah. And she sees it clearly. That doesn't match up with the amount of prescription she's currently wearing. Okay. Right? It's, it's too much. Okay, and let me ask you this. Um, when she's look ask her when she's looking at the print without her glasses, is she seeing anything double there? All right, when you hold this up. Do you see anything double? Do you see anything double? No. Do you see anything in the room double? My phone. The phone. The phone is double. So is it more like distance things that she sees double? So it's probably like a little further objects that are double. Further, further objects. So um, are the, is it double like horizontal? Is it double like diagonal? Is it double vertical? How do you see the double? Do you see the, do you see the other phone over here or up here? Up here? Okay. So it's like more up. Yeah. Vertical. Two of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, then have her put the glasses on and look at the phone and um, tell me about the double. Good. A double. Okay. All right. I want her to do some, uh, some motor things with me. So first thing I'd like her to do is see if she can balance on one foot. Stand up and like yoga. Can she balance on one foot? Go in the middle of the room where all your, your toy room stuff is. Without without jumping around, okay. Can you let go? Okay. 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 Now stand on the other foot. Okay. Now do it with eyes closed. Okay. And now the other foot, eyes closed. 
go. <laughs> okay. All right. So now, is there a way you can create a little space? I want her to do a kind of um, walking for me. Okay. Yeah. Let's move some of your toys out of the way. Just throw the toys out of the way. Yeah. And I'll explain what I want her to do. All right. Okay. So she's going to okay. need to walk. This is this is the what she's got to do. So I want to see her whole body while she's doing this. Okay. I want her to put her feet out like a duck. Put your so feet the, out like a duck. So not just spread them out, but the the feet have to be pointed like toward her towards her ears. Okay, so, so go like this. Okay, so let me see. There we go. All right, okay. I want. All right, and, and I want her to walk, uh, maybe take about 10 steps. She, her heels don't need to touch. They can be spread out a little bit and see if she can walk like a duck. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, stop. Can you roll your sleeves up on your shirt so we can see your hands? Where your sleeves up? Come on, I want to see your arms. Okay, the other side. All right. All right, go back to the door and try it again. Okay, so feet out. Uh huh. All right, go. Let your arms go to the side. Let your arms hang down. Okay, very good. Come on, you can do it. Get those feet spread out. Okay, now walk backwards. Get those feet spread out like a duck. <laughs> Let go of your dress. Let go of your dress with your hands. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, now I want you to put your feet in like a pigeon. So toes are pointing in. Spread your feet out. Spread out and then put your feet in. <laughs> point your toes to each other. Your big toes towards, towards each other. There we go. Now there let you your go. arm let your arms fall to your side. There we go. Thank you. All right. Now go ahead and walk. <laughs> yeah. And then walk backwards. Okay, I'm gonna do something. Oh, never mind. Okay. All right. Um, now, is there enough room? Can you show me your hopping on one foot? Can you hop on one foot? There we go. Come on, hop forward. Here, hop towards this way. That's okay. Now hop, hop backwards. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Here. Here. Got it? Where are you? There you are. Yeah. All right. Oh, go on. Okay. And then hop backwards. Okay. Go backwards. And now the other foot forwards. Now the other foot. And then hop backwards. Okay. All right. Now, can, can, can you ask her to gallop? So one foot is always ahead of the other, and she's galloping. You want to gallop? There you go. And then gallop backwards. Okay, and then put the other foot forward. Do the same thing. And then gallop backwards. Okay, now, now skip. Can you skip? And skip backwards. <laughs> okay. Now let's have her lie down on the floor on her back in the middle of the room so we can see her, get away from all her toys so she can move her arms and her legs. Got a lot of toys yeah, that's okay. That's all right. So, okay. so we want her to do we want her to do a slow angle on the snow. 
So she starts with her feet together and her arms down to her side. Now, now what? <laughs> and now I want you to do like a, an angel in the snow. So your arms go over your head and your feet go out at the same time. Okay, so, so start with your arms down to your side. Okay, and your feet are going to spread out at the same time your arms go over your head and go really slow, as slow as you can. Okay, now bring them all in together. Okay, do it again. Good. Whoops, Keep your get your legs out. Get your legs out. There we go. Now bring them all back together so they land at the same time. Well, your feet got there first. <laughs> got to do timing. <laughs> One more time. One more, and then we're done. One more, and we're done. Okay, and then whoops, and then back. Okay, your your legs got there though before your your arms. You got to get them all there at the same time. <laughs> okay, no problem. You're doing great. No problem. Yep, one more time. So get the feet to touch when your hands touch. Whoops. There we go. Good job. You figured it out. Okay. All right. I want to talk to your mom a little bit. So we're free, and maybe we'll bring you back later. All right. You can go if you want, or you can stay in here. You can, you can do your, no, we're stay. So now this is your mom's time. All right. Okay. All right. So the information I'm going to give you is a little different than what you've been getting, and um, this is being recorded, so you can you can kind of digest this. So let me start here. Um, the the eyes originate from the brain very early in utero. So every part of the eyeball is brain. And learning to use your eyes is a process that starts occurring in utero and birth and the first three years of life. And one of the most important things that helps you develop your eyes and vision is the ability to move your body through space. And if there's any restriction in moving the body through space in those first year of life, it can interfere with the development of the eyes as it relates to the brain and the body. So movement stimulates vision. And so in this in this particular case, the eye doctor is measuring this this condition called farsightedness. And what farsightedness means is that the eye muscles are not responding very well to objects. So what the person needs then is a high magnification. And so what the lens is doing is it's interfering with the eye muscles developing so that they can learn their own focusing responsiveness when they look at objects. And usually the, the prescription, if they're going to give one, is, is small. The smaller the number, the less magnification. So when we're at seven, that's a very high magnification. So you wonder why is she measuring that? What, what is the cause of that? And I would say part of the cause is that early on when she was in that harness, there was a bit of restriction in her ability to learn to move her body through space. Mm. And specifically getting the right side of the body, the left side of the body to start working together the front of the body and the back of the body working together, and the top of the body and the bottom of the body working together. So the way that I work with kids is that we assess their development as it relates to where their eye exam is. And instead of giving strong glasses, there are some physical therapy 
exercises that stimulate the eye muscles so that that farsightedness goes away. Right now, the glasses that are being worn are basically interfering with the visual muscles developing. Yeah. And it's creating this distorted magnification that um, is, is interfering with her development. So this is much more than an eyeball um, problem or an eyeball situation. The eyes are very connected to the brain and the body. And in kids, there's a certain developmental arc that all kids go through in their movement that helps them expand their vision. So for example, when I had her do the duck walk and the pigeon walk, mm -hmm. what those tests tell me is that her motor system is not connecting to the visual system and that the motor system is also developmentally behind as well as the visual system being behind. So that we that's a that's a way that we can assess it. And there's a certain series of movement patterns that all infants go through called the primitive reflexes. Occupational therapists know about this. But I, uh, I study with a group of eye doctors in Scandinavia who are kind of ahead of us. And um, what they found is that kids that have had some kind of developmental um, interference in their, in their uh, childhood, these motor patterns, when you, when you do them, they release the eyes and they help stimulate the eyes to develop better. So these eyeglass prescriptions start to go away. One of the most famous primitive reflexes you might have heard of is called the startle reflex, the moral reflex. And these primitive reflexes are important because they help the early infant adjust to being out of the birth canal and they help guide the child to uh, learn the more complicated movement patterns like creeping and crawling and hopping and balancing and skipping and, and those kinds of things. So these primitive reflexes, um, they were signaled to me that they, they haven't been fully integrated because the duck walk and the pigeon walk uh, are not being done quite easily. You know, it's, it's hard for her to put her feet out. And you may have noticed she was turning her hands in or when we were doing the pigeon walk, her shoulders were kind of going in. And so that is a signal that there's a developmental delay in her sensory motor um, skills. And it takes a certain kind of therapist, if it's an OT, who has studied sensory motor integration to understand that there's a developmental influence here in why, number one, she's got such a strong farsighted prescription, and number two, without those lenses, there's a bit of a double vision, and it's a vertical double where her two eyes are not aiming together. They're not working together. And then the other thing that's suspect here is that without her glasses on, she's actually holding the book where you should be holding it. So that says to me the amount of magnification that she was given was way too much. That she, she could probably get away with at least half as much but the stronger the prescription, the more it interferes with the mus muscular development and the visual development. So I know you're calling me about her glasses and her eyes, but this is a whole body situation. And the way out of it, if you choose to go that route, would be, number one, I would give you some physical therapy exercises that would include doing some primitive reflexes to integrate those, to do some gross motor things related to the eyes, working with the vestibular system, which is the inner ear. So one of the ways I tested that was having her balance with her eyes closed. When she balances with her eyes closed, her inner ear is doing all the balancing and she fell over pretty quickly. So she's really balancing her body mostly with her vision 
and we need to bring the vestibular and the visual into it so that our eyes aren't stressing as much. So I can give you some exercises today if you choose to, to do that. It could help her with the reversal situation. It might prepare her for her reading better, her handwriting. And by the way, at her age, to reverse things is normal. It's not out of the norm. But what's happened in the school situation is they want kids to learn their letters earlier, but developmentally, they may not be ready to do that. And so the, the reversal is this big signal like, oh, my God, something's wrong. Well, nothing's wrong, but there's still a confusion in her own right left body sense. And when there's a confusion in the right left body sense, when you put a symbol out there, letters, they're going to just project that confusion onto the symbols. And so they're going to make the, the reversals. So when you develop a better body sense of integration, then the reversals will automatically go away. But I have kids that are eight, nine years old that are still working that out, especially in the Waldorf situation. So I want to give you some exercises and I want to make a recommendation possibly about getting maybe reducing this prescription and she'll actually see better, um, but it won't have the side effects of that really strong magnification. Um, that prescription is an optics correction, but it's it's interfering with the visual development. See, they're not they don't look at the eyes as part of the whole person. They're just looking at the optics of the eyeball and they're trying to correct that, but they're not looking at what the side effects are of that. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna pause here because there's a lot a lot of subjects I brought up. I'd like to hear your feedback. And, and also this, this idea that this is kind of a global developmental kind of challenge that goes way back to that harness situation. And, um, you know, hear your point of view on what you think about that. No, I believe it. I mean, that's why I reached out to you. Um, I know there's a lot of things that are more, like, that the actual eye doctors don't really tell you. Um, I figured there had to be more to it. Um, I didn't know everything like what you just said, um, but I mean, how would I actually go about like decreasing her prescription then? Okay, well, first of all, I'm gonna teach you. Um, um, so I'm going to teach you some exercises that you can do with her, which will really help many, many levels of her, um, of her life and her vision. And then in terms of the prescription, because I'm licensed to practice in 50 states of the U.S., I, I'm fully licensed, I can send you a reduced prescription. And so you'll have the prescription. You can just go to an optical place anywhere in your town and they'll fill the prescription. Okay. So it's a, I, you know, I have a medical license to do that. And, um, you know, I have all my medical licenses and all that on my prescription. So that's easy. You know, that's not a problem. Um, and what, what you can, what you can decide here is that, if she likes the frame, you can just have the lenses, the new lenses put in and you can keep the old lenses, tell the optical place, we'll keep these. And um, I'm gonna, I, I think she should be, she's at seven and a quarter. I'm gonna recommend a 3.5. Okay. I think we can come down 50%. And um, there's some other things I'm gonna recommend around her when she wears the glasses and so on. But um, there's also some astigmatism in that, and I'm gonna reduce the astigmatism. So astigmatism means the eye is misshapen. It's like an egg. Yeah, I have astigmatism. And um, she's got enough of it where I don't wanna take it all away from her, but I'm gonna balance the astigmatism and reduce it a bit. But uh, um, so, uh, I, I will send you a, a, a medical, a medical 
prescription and then you can go anywhere you know any optics uh, store or any place like that and and they'll fill it for you okay. but just keep the old lenses you know and yeah. she'll probably there, there there won't be any negative effects from it it'll just be positive so i'll, okay. I'll do that you know at the end of the session today okay okay so now let's talk about the exercises so as i said in farsightedness the muscles in the eye become uh, unresponsive when they look at objects so in other words for you and me um, you put an object out there and you focus and you can tell the details you can tell maybe you need lenses or not but still there's the ability for the brain to go, oh, there's an object out there. Let me focus the muscles on it. But in farsightedness, there's a lack of responsiveness. And that's a global uh, situation many times. And it's also, I think, related to the fact that she wasn't able to have free form movement um, when she was young. I mean, there was some movement, but it's pretty restricted and um, that's a that's a tough one. I, I don't know if I would have gone that route um, or I would have I would have maybe had an addendum around it where because it's too much stabilization and not enough exploration and freeform. I understand they're trying to form the hips, but also it really restricted this this exploratory thing that that kids need when they're really, really young. Okay, so that so that is, we can still fill in the gaps. All right, so the first exercise I want you to do with her is the startle reflex, the moral reflex. And I will send you written directions on it. And let me just say about these, these activities, this is not like going to the gym and you have to do it perfectly. What this is about is giving the brain new experiences through the movements. And basically we want Addison to just explore the movements, but it's gonna encourage her to have to use her whole body and coordinate her body in very specific ways. But it doesn't need to be exact. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be completely literal to what you might read on the page, okay? Um, because what we're doing here is we're building new pathways in the brain. And again, I wanna emphasize the eyeballs are just the outer part of the brain. It's, yeah. all, it's all brain, but, but the eyes are just the outside part of it. All right, so in this Moro reflex, we, it's called the starfish exercise. And what it is, is that she is going to be, I'm gonna uh, change the screen here. Okay, so what it is, is you can see my arms. She's gonna be moving her arms in like this and the head. And she's also gonna be moving her, her legs so the ankles cross. So I'm moving my arm or my right arm is over my left and my right ankle is over my left ankle, and my head goes from up to down. Okay. okay. And then I open up, and now I do left over right. This is probably going to be hard for her to do, so you might have to help her. So she does this lying on the back, and she's got a pillow under her head, and she does five in each position, if you can. Maybe she anywhere between three and five. And this helps integrate that startle moral reflex. So that one should be done every day. Now, um, it doesn't need to be perfect, but if she's moving the right arm over the left arm, I don't want her left ankle over her right ankle. Yeah. If she's doing right over left, it's gotta be globally through the upper body and the lower body. And by moving the head, it stimulates that inner ear. So anytime you're moving the head, so the moral reflex is like this response. The, the infant is on the floor and they're doing this. This is the startle. And so the head is moving, the arms are moving. 
the reason why this this reflex is so important is that it when a child understands the limbs bringing them in to the middle the midline there's a visual midline and a body midline she starts to understand something called bilateral integration getting the right side and the left side working together on a gross motor level big muscles big body and the brain starts to understand well if i get really good with the big body big muscles then my eyeballs which are the small muscles have a a pattern to follow and so exercise one, you're going to do this for about two weeks, is going to be the Moro starfish exercise. And I'll send you written directions. But again, I want to emphasize, just see if you can get her to get the arms and the legs to come in and go out. But she's paying attention to which side is on top and which side is on the bottom and alternating that and then moving the head. That, those are the key things with the Moro. Sometimes you can do it sitting up, lying down. Um, so that's basically what we want to do for the first two weeks. That's the moral reflex. Okay. Okay. All right. Exercise number two is going to be to get her to start balancing. See if she can balance with her eyes closed. And the goal would be what I would do is have her put her hands on her belly button and her eyes are closed and see if she can balance with her eyes closed for maybe 10 or 15 seconds without jumping around or fall, uh, falling over. Now, if she can't do it on one foot, you could put one foot ahead of the other and she could do it heel to toe, but get her to do the balance with eyes closed and that starts to stimulate the inner ear to go, oh, wow. Now, some other ways that you can um, stimulate the inner ear is by doing some kinds of movements like spinning, rocking, swinging. Um, there's a lot of way that there are a lot of ways to get that inner ear activated. So if you've got any ideas on how to, you know, spin and roll and like one of the things we'd recommend is you could use a physio ball, a big exercise ball, and you put her tummy on the ball and you roll her back and forth. That's a way to get the vestibular working or get her on her back and have that ball rolling. So I'm going to leave it up to you. You can even another way to stimulate the vestibular. You may not want to do this is having her jump up and down. And so you could hold her hands. She's jumping on the bed or on a, a rebounder. And in addition to that, can she do that jumping on one foot? So I want her to work with her hopping. So the hopping would be either in place on a bed or a rebounder, or can she hop forwards? But this is where I want you to create an obstacle course so that she visually has to guide herself through and around objects. And I want her to do these without her glasses on. Okay. So the Moro is without the glasses. The balance with eyes closed is without the glasses, the hopping and the galloping and the skipping are motor exercises, but you're setting up an obstacle course so that she's got to visually guide her body through space. This is what was missing in her development. And yeah. the other thing is I want her to be able to motor backwards as well as going forwards. Okay. Going backwards, she can look over her shoulder. That's fine. She can do that. But I want her to start to understand her spatial world with her body and her vision. That's really what vision is. Understanding where I move through space. It's not about reading an eye chart. Hmm. It's not vision. That's eyesight. And it's a very static measurement. Hmm. Now, another thing you could do in the motor moving with the obstacle course, and again, I'll send you some ideas, would be bear walk, where she's moving the right hand and the right foot at the same time, yeah. left hand, left foot, and then alternating doing right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot. But that's also obstacle course, so she could do that bear walk, and she could also do it crawling. 
if you could get her to crawl. She could also do marine crawl where she's on her belly. So there's something really important about tummy time when you're young because it teaches you about neck control and then eventually eye control because you have to lift your neck and your head. So yeah. all of the things would be possible. Marine crawl, regular crawling, um, air walk, hopping, skipping. You could even do it with a, a ball where she soccer ball or a, a, a ball to bounce. That may be hard for her. But in other words, I want you as much as you can to bring her vision into the equation when she's moving her body through space and you want to create challenges so she's got to look before she moves. Okay. She's using her eyes and I don't want I don't want her glasses on when she's doing this. That okay. Would be important. Okay, so you got lots of things there. You don't have to do them all every day, you do all, all of them in one day. You can pick and choose. She could even, um, now that room is kind of small, but I think um, she could roll like a log. So you'd have to have a bigger room, but can she be lengthwise oh, and yeah. can she roll like a log and move her body through space? That's really what she needs to learn here needs to learn to move her body through space and she also um, needs to get better at bilateral integration. Okay. Now, after the two weeks, you're going to stop the Moro starfish and I'm going to give you the second exercise where she's going to be on her belly and her legs need to be straight and her thumbs are going to be on her nose. And she's going to lift her upper body if she's going to turn her head to the right and push the thumb out and look at her thumb and then bring it back to the middle and then do the left. This is called the TLR, Tonic Labyrinth Reflex. And it's good for eye tracking, vestibular stimulation, and um, you're on your tummy to do it. It's probably going to be a little bit of a challenge. And her legs need to be straight. She's going to want to bend her legs. So she can push her legs into the floor, but she's got to lift like her upper body to do it. So that's the second two weeks that you'll substitute for the starfish. Again, I'll send you directions. And, um, and then some other things that you can do would be see if she can get a ball and see if she can bounce and catch the ball to a metronome. Now, most smartphones have an app where you can get a free metronome. So the metronome is clicking and she's got to bounce the ball every time she hears the metronome. That's going to be hard for her. And the metronome is going to be at 40 beats a minute. Now she can use two hands. I'd like her to try to do one hand and catch it the other hand and catch it and go from right to left, left to right. So she's bouncing and catching, but it's got to be on the beat. It's going to be an interesting um, process for her to coordinate listening and uh, coordinating the, the bouncing ball. And make it a fairly big ball, not a tennis ball, but, you know, kickball or a soccer ball or something that's easy for her to to bounce and catch now once that becomes easy you can add the second step in it which is i'm going to send you a a chart of letters it's called the heart chart you're going to put that up on the wall and she can stand you know two feet away my preference would be to have her to do this without the glasses but you'll have to see if there's double vision then she should wear the glasses and if there's no double vision, then have her read it without the glasses. So you'll just have to see. So here's the deal. The letters are in rows. She starts in the upper left corner of the first letter. The metronome is going. She bounces the ball. And at the same time, she reads a letter. Whoa. Then she reads the next letter, bouncing the ball. So she's got to coordinate bouncing and catching and tracking. 
one bounce, one letter per beat. See if she can read the whole chart or part of the chart. Now, another way she could read it is the columns. So one day you could do the rows, right to left. The next day you could do left to right. You could do down to up. So you could do the columns or up to down. So you can, I'd like you to vary the chart. Okay. So she's got a bounce, read the letter, catch it. She's got to bounce it and read it all to the met tick of the metronome. Okay. So again, you get to choose, you know, if you can spend 10 minutes a day, you might just get two of the exercises done. That's okay. It's more of the consistency that every day is going to be her physical therapy for her eyes. Part primitive reflexes, part gross motor, obstacle courses, part um, ball, ball bounce, those kinds of things. All right, we'll try it all. Yeah, so um, I want to stop here. Is this like so really overwhelming for you? Is this what you not expected? Are you up no. for this? No, I'm up for it. I'm always up for um, alternative stuff. Um, I kind of like more alternative stuff and actually going to the physical doctor nowadays because they just yeah. don't ever figure anything out there. So. I think this is going to work well, and I'd like you to observe, you know, any behavioral changes, emotional, um, like, for example, some things that might change could be she picks up a book and wants to read more of it, or her writing or drawing gets different, or she gets attracted to doing new activities, or socially she's better, or she, her her athletics gets better or, you know, you, in other words, we're really creating different patterns in the brain to help the eyes start to grow and develop. No, I, think, I, I think there's been uh, a bit of interference in her visual development and that prescription reflects a very early uh, time in her life that she's still back there. And so these activities are going to invite her to move forward in growing and developing. So they're going to they're going to have a, a much bigger influence beyond just the prescription. That's kind of secondary. And then I'll email you the prescription and go get that. I don't think that there's nothing negative about that. And you can email me. Let me know how you're doing. If you're frustrated or you have questions or you're not sure. Um, it could go either way, you know, she might just take off or she might resist. I don't know. She looks like she, she's hungry for this stuff. And I also would say it's okay for her to take her glasses off some of the time if she's home. I would encourage she that. She does here and there. Um, especially, you know, in the indoor world, if there's double, then... We're going to have to address that maybe in round two. You know, that can't do it all at once. But yeah. the double is another signal that she's not getting her two eyes working together. And uh, that's an integration situation. So um, we'll, we'll just kind of stay in that. Okay. Um, stay, stay tuned to that. So I'm going to send you a bunch of handouts. And... Um, Again, if you have any questions, but this is the prescription she's needing to neutralize the early beginning that she had. So it gets her to start. It's going to be a catalyst for her to move her forward. And she's, I can tell just working with her briefly, she's super smart. She's mm -hmm. super tuned in. Um, and she doesn't need all this around her eyes to to function at a high level in fact it's it's holding her back a bit yeah no she's pretty right. fast learner and everything that oh, she yeah. does she's great yeah i i, I love working with her mm -hmm. so um any any questions this is the time 
conversation wise uh, and I will send you the recording also but any other questions or uh, no I think I'm all set I'm pretty happy with everything okay so please keep in touch um, you know now I'm I'm very interested in in helping you move forward now that I have more of the history and this is a very common um, story what, what you went through with her and that's why I asked those questions because it's we want we want to expand the movement experience man we need to do that that movement is so important in this equation and um, uh, we don't want restriction I mean we want stabilization sure but we also want a kind of a, a mastery of being able to move the body and bring all the senses into it so we can understand where we're going in space, where we're going in our environment. Yeah. And if you can master that, learning is great, relationships are great, sports, emotions, I mean, it's all related. And so we wanna bring those things forward. That would be a way that I would say it. I'm happy. Okay. All right. So uh, look for the email. I'll send you the prescription. I'll send you some of these other things. And then please stay in touch. I, I want to hear from you. Okay. No, I will for sure. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the iClarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.